Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is facing political pressure to fix Canada's housing crisis. According to a new report from housing experts, Canada needs to triple the pace of home building to address a housing crunch that has been worsened by rapid population growth. Trudeau is being advised to consider tax changes and cheap financing to help spur the building of roughly 2 million rental units over a seven-year period. Falling short on delivering a tangible strategy could open the federal government up to even more criticism, according to recent polling by Nanos Research for Bloomberg News, two out of three respondents already believe that increasing the annual target for permanent residents to half a million by 2025 will have a negative impact on the cost of housing. Nick Nanos is chief data scientist and founder of Nanos Research Group. He joins us with more on the findings. Hey, Nick. Hey, John. Let's, uh, let's start with the general view on population growth, because let's face it, our economy needs to grow, and even some in the U.S. envy Canada's immigration approach. But the issue of affordability seems to be shining through in your research. Absolutely. You know, in the survey that we did with uh, Bloomberg News, you know, we asked Canadians what they thought the type of impact would be of, you know, having 500,000 uh, new Canadians and about two out of every three think that it'll have a negative or somewhat negative impact on housing. I think for a lot of Canadians, they're like, OK, so let's have some new Canadians. Where are they going to live? And, uh, and I think as a result, you don't have to be a housing expert to figure out that bringing in that many new Canadians, unless there is a long term, a short term, a medium term plan, uh, is just going to put stress on the housing market and everybody's feeling it right across the board. I mentioned a new report from housing experts. It calls for 5.8 million homes to be built by the end of 2030, of which 2 million would be purpose built rental units. But that would require coordination among city, provincial, federal government. Uh, entities, not to mention public and private builders, investors, etc. How would you describe how the Prime Minister's comments on who's responsible for getting this done have been received? You'll probably recall he made those headlines last month saying, I'll be blunt, housing isn't a primary federal responsibility. Yeah, well, I think for Canadians that are struggling to pay for the rent of the mortgage, it's basically thin gruel. The reality is, is that the federal government has pulled out of the housing business, right? They don't have a lot of levers. You know, they can throw money at it, but they still need cooperation from municipalities and also from provinces. Like, this is ready-made for a national discussion between the federal government and the premiers on a national housing strategy. You know, the other thing that we're dealing with is homelessness is also on the increase just because of the pressure on the, on the housing market. And I don't think it's going to be any consolation to anyone who's trying to pay the rent or the mortgage in the next 30 days, especially with interest rates where they are right now. It's not going to give them any kind of solace whatsoever. Nick, I also want to share a, a pretty telling clip from a recent interview we did with the CEO of Rio Can, which is one of the largest builders in this country. And, and he said he would gladly build more, but he highlighted some of the bureaucratic restraints that his company faces. Let's have a listen to what he had to say. But in today's environment where you've got exceedingly high biz, uh, building costs, you've got interest costs that have also elevated quite a bit over the last two years, and you've got a regulatory environment which, while improving, thanks to some of the maneuvers that our provincial government in particular have, uh, have put in place, it's still a long, long process. And you've got to have a lot of capital to, to get through that process. Because from the time you start an application to build something that is high rise to the time you can actually have it be income generating, in a place like Toronto, it's years and years. So there's only a few participants who have that kind of capital that can maneuver through that with patients. And that, that's got to change. So, Nick, with that said, how weighty does any action plan from the government have to be? And let's assume, you know, you've got the federal government coordinating with provincial leaders. If it's paper thin, won't the people who actually build, and we just heard from one of them, won't they call that out? No, absolutely. And, you know, the thing is, is that the structure is not in place. It's, it's a one-two punch right now, John. You know, one is rising interest rates or interest rates that have been higher than what we've seen in quite a long time. And the other thing is the rising cost of inflation. So just the mere cost, as that individual mentioned, the cost to build housing has actually increased. Inflation has to get under control. Interest rates have to go down in order to provide some sort of help to not just builders, but to average Canadians right now. And uh, we're not, I, I don't think this is going to be enough to deal with the crisis that we're having in 
in the housing market and also the, crowds, the crisis in homelessness. Nick, if we were on the election campaign trail, I, I would assume this would be a big issue, but we are not currently. Uh, it, it is possible we won't see a federal election until, let's say, 2025. But give us a potential election roadmap, how things might play out from here. Well, right now in the latest Nanos tracking, the Conservatives had about a six to seven point advantage. They're in minority territory uh, if there were an election held today. So, you know, the good news for the Conservatives is that they have the advantage. The bad news for the Conservatives is that the election is not today. But, you know, the thing is, is that the challenge for the Liberals is that there are a number of big files, like the environment, you know, like reconciliation, where they've made promises and for one reason or another have not been able to deliver. That's what they have to worry about. The Canadians say, okay, you're saying the right stuff, but, you know, show me the money, show me the impact. And I'm not sure there's enough runway uh, between now and the next election for the Liberals to show that there's been progress on this.